Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP as well as the vast majority of crypto and finance. And with that being said, I hope that you are all having a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are out there in the world. One of the biggest topics right now around crypto is obviously the Bitcoin ETFs. Now, in this video, I want to take this a step further, right? Because I feel as though everyone is stuck at stage one, which is how much will Bitcoin be worth with these spot ETFs? How much money will we, will we make off of these Bitcoin spot ETFs? And although, yeah, listen, we, we definitely need to be focused on how much money we're going to make because at the end of the day, that's why we are here. But also, I feel as though that is clouding everyone's judgment. We need to look further ahead at step two, step three, step four, step five. Now, what am I talking about? Well, I made a post over on X and I said, I strongly believe that we are starting to move away from the speculative market into a much more mature one. Let's talk about it real quick. Recently, we saw Jay Clayton discussing Bitcoin spot ETFs. His overall view was that during his prior tenure at the SEC, there was far too much wash trading and illicit use of Bitcoin to have an ETF. Now, apparently Bitcoin is safe, even after Elizabeth Warren and Jamie Dimon were saying the opposite just recently. Confusing, right? The significance of the ETFs is not the money that will come from it, but the reputation. We are now seeing for the first time in history of crypto, traditional financial giants coddling Bitcoin. This definitely goes against the original idea of Bitcoin and crypto, but it was inevitable either way. Leaders from this space, especially from Ripple, predicted this is the year institutions really start taking crypto serious. Regulations, standardization is what I really am focused on at the moment. Singapore, UAE, UK, Hong Kong, Japan, Europe, hell, even the US is now moving in on some substantial bills for crypto or progressing heavily. Now, it would be a bad decision to avoid the key factors and rather be distracted by just what the ETFs do short term. Remember what the ETFs really are, a welcome mat for the Web2 retail herd. We witnessed Larry Fink and various other traditional financial leaders practically spotlight tokenization as the biggest thing in the history of tech on mainstream media. I reported on the giants already tapped in on various fronts regarding this as well like Hedera with Aberdeen or even Stellar with Franklin Templeton. And these are just two of many. We are starting to see the flood of institutional enterprise players jumping into the space reports are coming out from names like city mentioning the keys to mass adoption they are all aware of what is coming to the world of crypto over the course of the next few years this will be bigger than the internet and it truly will transcend every single innovation in history notice how i didn't even mention the convergence of blockchain and ai which will accelerate this even further at the end of the day the ETFs are the beginning of what's to come for crypto. Institutions are embracing this market for what it really will become, a breeding ground of incredible innovation and wealth creation. The key for the retail sector was to be positioned and be positioned before it really is too late to be early. I'm not focused on prices at this point, and I surely don't care what happens next week or even next month. I'm looking much further ahead. This is the biggest opportunity we will ever have for the next probably 10, 20, hell, who knows how many years. Don't waste it. And again, you know, as we really focus on the institutional players, I have been addressing this for a while now. ETFs, it is just one product, but this is the key that unlocks a ton of opportunity for the institutions to tap into. They're here now. They really are. They're knocking at the door. And the ETFs, they're just a door opening. This is the start. But beyond this, 
January 2nd, unlocking the potential of regulated digital assets. This is from BNP Paribas. Check this out. So the head of digital assets at BNP Paribas Security Services Business explores how asset servicing is evolving to support capital markets tokenization. All through DLT. Now, here are the key ones to look at down here. So first and foremost, new responsibilities and liabilities need to be carefully assessed. Legal and compliance teams can leverage experimentation to gain expertise on the particularities of tokenized instruments and the responsibilities of each actor in the tokenized asset creation and distribution process. Agreement negotiation may take longer than for traditional arrangements. The negotiation of agreements will, with providers and partners can take a relatively long time and clearly defining the roles and responsibilities of each participant is necessary to ensure that asset safekeeping is practical. Connecting the digital and traditional worlds. Now this is where things get very interesting. It will take a considerable amount of work. The digital and traditional assets uh, worlds will likely coexist for an extended period. And this means that custodians must provide a bridge between both worlds. Now, this is a quote that you need to focus on for the rest of this video, and I will address why. There are elements still lacking in the market. There are several missing components that are necessary to deliver a full end to end digital process to support tokenized assets. One of the greatest challenges for, uh, for uh, firms participating in these experiments is that cash is still managed off chain. Even if a security can be settled digitally on a blockchain platform, the payment leg must be processed on existing systems. Public and private blockchains represent differing risk and opportunities. Public blockchain brings additional investor reach, but these projects require extra assessments related to technical risk, liabilities, and responsibilities. Private blockchains must be considered in the context of the ongoing challenges of potentially maintaining connectivity to multiple platforms over time, as well as building a large enough network of participants. Interoperability will be central to future industry efficiency. And what this really makes me think about is quant, actually, and then also collaboration which we're already starting to see. Now, here is the last quote that I really want to mention. The role of the custodian will continue to evolve as the traditional and digital asset worlds interact and change over time. The priority for the asset servicing sector will be, the, will be to understand their clients' current requirements and, and anticipate and be ready to support any future needs as the regulation and market structure supporting digital assets transforms. Now, why is this a big deal? Well, guess what? It's because Medico. Medico is the key piece here. We've been talking about it with Ripple for a little bit of time now. Before I really dive into this, I also want to mention Standard Chartered because, on par with the ETF discussions, we just seen Standard Chartered say that they're looking for 50 to 100 billion dollars of inflows to Bitcoin ETFs in 2024, opening the potential for Bitcoin to reach the $200,000 level by the end of 2025. Now, I'm not anticipating Bitcoin hitting these levels and I'm really not anticipating the market being that bullish. Remember, you can't trust these big banks. But I will say this, Standard Chartered being this bullish on digital assets is very beneficial for XRP holders. Why? Because they're still working with Ripple. Remember that Standard Chartered invested in Ripple back in 2016. They have been heavily tapped in on that front. And just recently, we've seen from Ripple back in November, industry leaders from Zodiac Custody, Standard Chartered, HSBC, and Medico discuss strategic objectives, institutional use cases, and optimizing efficiency in the tokenized economy. And I don't need to mention that HSBC, around the same exact time, plans a digital asset cust uh, custody using Ripple's Medico. You guys have the announcement of it. And big shout out to Cowboy Crypto for this. But check out this video real quick. It's about 37 uh, seconds long. Collaboration is always much more successful. Providing we have 
a set understanding of what the rules of the game are. And that really comes down to the regulatory aspect that we have that ensures that at the end of the day, the owner of the asset can sleep at night in the knowledge that they know what they own and they have legal title to it. It's being kept in a secure way. Now, like I said, Ripple with Medico is the secret sauce here. Even going back to BNP Paribas, talking about regulated digital assets and how custodian players, let's, let's go back to this, right? How custodian players are the key, right? Custodians must provide a bridge between both worlds. Guess what? Scroll down, check this out. You have Zodiac Custody, right? BBVA Switzerland expands partnership with Medico. And this is all during 2023. HSBC, uh, GFT. Here's Ripple buying um, or acquiring um, Medico beforehand. BP Bank, DZ Bank, DECA. And then also down here, you have TOG. You have Union Bank, BNP Paribas back in 2022. Security Service selects Medico to develop digital assets, custody capabilities. And this is one of many. I mean, you have Arcix over here, which has ties back to Hedera, Societe Generale, City, and the list goes on and on and on. Guys, I could talk about Medico all day long. Like when we really look at how significant Medico is, especially for Ripple, this is the all-in-one umbrella for institutions. I've talked about this and I've been mentioning it since we've seen uh, Ripple actually acquire them. So again, when we look at this space, we are now at the point in time where the institutions are here, right? And they're planting their seeds. They're planting it with custodian players, with payment players, tokenization players, and they know that it's going to grow. I mean, hell, when you see a bank like Standard Chartered putting out a report, talking about ETF approvals, talking about how much money is going to, like, they are now bullish. They want to make sure that they get as much liquidity in as possible. And what they're really comparing this to is they're comparing it to gold as well. They're talking about it back in uh, 2004 when we seen the, the ETP with gold. Um, now the price of gold rose about four to 4.3 X in the seven to eight years it took for gold ETP holdings to mature after the first ETP was introduced. Again, when we look at it now, markets are a little bit different, but I'm not expecting Bitcoin to hit $200,000 anytime soon. In fact, I actually think that we top, uh, before like $150,000. Again, that's my Overall viewpoint, you guys don't need to follow what I, I think, but I feel as though right now, the institutions with the regulators and the big players all on Wall Street are really hyping this up, which makes me feel as though it's a manipulative event, in the short term at least. Long term, this is the beginning. This is the start. Let it be known that an ETF, a spot ETF from players like BlackRock, for example, that should give you an insight on what's to come. It starts with ETFs, then it blossoms into tokenization services, maybe tokenized deeds, tokenized securities. To like When we talk about how much larger this is going to be, it's not just going to end with ETFs. From institutions. Why do you think the institutions are tapped in with Medico to develop security? Like, this is securities. Securities are a massive market, but it's all about tokenization, security tokenization. Uh, they want to develop custody services as well with Medico. Like, we're talking about the largest banks out there, HSBC, that has trillions tied to its name. How could you look at this, right, in terms of all of these big institutions lining up and say, this market's not bullish? It is more bullish now than ever before because we are starting to see crypto taken seriously. The big players see it now. They understand it. This is going to be a trend for a very long time. 
Obviously, yes, we are in the middle of a cycle. We need to make sure that we are taking our profits along the way. We need to make sure that we are de-risking. But at the end of the day, you do not want to miss out on the long-term game here because it's, it's all starting to blossom and it's all coming together at a crucial time where I feel as though everyone needs to start focusing on what really matters. It's not just about how much money is going to pour in. It's not just about how high Bitcoin is going to go. It's about the steps that are being taken by these big institutions. And it all starts this year with the ETF approvals and with these products being on traditional Wall Street uh, players' portfolios, for an example. And this is going to be a big, big deal for traditional finance merging with crypto. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on. If you guys have more free content, you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. And with that being said, guys, this has been Nick. Peace out.